Today, we have a record number 19 people in space in orbit. This includes the Polaris Dawn crew, which are orbiting on a SpaceX Dragon with four private astronauts on board. And the head of Europe's Area on Space thinks it's not a good idea for SpaceX to be sending billionaires to space. This is a battle of philosophies, and I want to talk about what we are currently doing with human spaceflight and where the future might go. Today's record-breaking day of 19 people in space is brought to you by the Polaris Dawn crew that launched yesterday and the Soyuz MS-26 crew, which launched today. So altogether, that's 12 people either on or heading to the International Space Station, four people in a free-flying dragon in low Earth orbit, and three people on the Chinese space station Tiangang. When I first saw the news that there was 19 people, that was a new record, I was like, that's exciting, but that's not that many, is it? We have been doing human spaceflight for 63 years. It's certainly not where people thought we would be at the dawn of the space age. Throughout recent history, throughout modern history, you will see science fiction and real actual business projections of how many people they expected to be in space at this time that mostly included private individuals. The idea for many decades was not to have only government astronauts dominate space, but to have mostly customers, mostly passengers, people who are not government trained astronauts. But because of the low accessibility of space until fairly recently, there has been a bottleneck. So there's certainly no shortage of people who want to go to space. Every few years, somebody puts out a study of how many people are wealthy enough to afford going to space. A subset of those people want to go to space. That is the projection of how many people are going to be space tourists or private passengers in the near future. And every one of those studies is wildly wrong because they all way overestimated the availability of launch to space for humans. Commercial human spaceflight has only been possible since May of 2020, when SpaceX launched the Crew Dragon Demo-2 mission to the International Space Station for NASA. You saw glimpses of commercial industry partnering with governments in the recent past. I mean, you had MirCorp take over the last mission of Mir. That was a government-built space station. Those were government cosmonauts. It was a commercially run operation for the last mission of Mir. You saw Space Adventures partnering with Roscosmos to send private individuals to the International Space Station, that's government-run space station, and a government spaceflight provider. So the era of commercial human spaceflight, brand new, so very new. So when we're talking about commercial orbital human spaceflight, we can look ahead and see commercial space stations. And those commercial space stations are also going to be public-private partnerships and, you know, collaborations with governments as a customer and bringing government astronauts to those facilities. Which brings me to an interview that Stefan Israel did. He is the head of Ariane Space. I will link it in the description below. It is in French, and I don't know enough French to accurately translate it. So I'm going to be relying on a translation by Andrew Parsonson. He is a journalist from European Space Flight. According to his translation, Stefan Israel said on this interview, yesterday, for example, Musk sent a billionaire into space with a commercial flight. What does that say to us? It doesn't mean we need to do the same. Space should be for everyone, a sustainable, clean space. Our priority isn't to send billionaires. I have nothing against them, but that's not our main goal. And this is not the first time that somebody from Arion Space, Arion Group, ESA, has made a cringy, embarrassing comment like this. But this one particularly struck me because it's specifically criticizing Polaris Dawn, which to me has the potential to open up human spaceflight for more people, more normal people, more everyday people than anything that has ever been done in spaceflight before. You know, we had Inspiration4 as the first driver here, the first fully commercial mission that was not at all related to NASA, not funded by taxpayers, funded by Jared Isaacman, a billionaire. And he, cho he funded the entire mission and he chose three individuals who were not billionaires to join him on that mission. Polaris Dawn and the Polaris program is a continuation of that, where it's a partnership with SpaceX, with a commercial company, to, to open up access to space. The very bottleneck that has held back human spaceflight for decades is beginning to open. 
because of the wealth of private individuals who are willing to commit that wealth to the greater good of opening up access to not just Jared Isaacman, but three other individuals who are not billionaires. And as many, many people have pointed out since that interview was posted, Air and Space does not bring humans to space. So this is not the goal of Air and Space or Aeon Group because that is not what they do. They do not do human spaceflight. If you are curious about where their market niche is, I actually did a video on Ariane 6, whether or not that rocket is competitive. So if you're interested in that, check that out up here. But nowhere do I talk about human spaceflight because that is not their market. I don't think it is fair or at all accurate to say that launching people who are wealthy to space or launching people who are sponsored by wealthy individuals to space is less clean or less sustainable. Jared Isaacman, after Inspiration4, I mean, I interviewed him for my book, by the way, and when I interviewed him, it was before his flight on Inspiration4, and he made it very clear that he didn't want Inspiration4 to be his last mission. Now, he did say later on that when he landed from Inspiration4, he thought that was his only mission, and it was only with talking with Elon Musk that the idea of Polaris program came about. People who experience space, they want to go again. Not, not universal. Not not everyone loves it, but in general, the majority of people who fly to space want to go again. And it is an incentive for them to make that sustainable so that they and others can continue to do that. The vast majority of people who I interviewed for my book, the majority of them said that they want to inspire other people to follow in their footsteps. And some people have the luxury of putting their money where their mouth is, to use an American expression. Some people have the luxury, like Jared Isaacman, to have that wealth to bring others along with them. This is just cracking the door open. The Polaris Dawn program is building upon what SpaceX started with, with Inspiration4, and then building upon it, building up more capabilities, building up more of a track record, lessons learned, ways that they can develop the technology like spacesuits, all these different technologies that need to be built up in order to do larger scale human spaceflight. That's what I see Polaris Dawn doing. That's what I see the Polaris program doing. That's what I see SpaceX doing. And that's what I see other spaceflight companies doing. It's not just SpaceX, of course. There's commercial space stations that will hopefully be coming on board soon. They have a similar goal of opening up spaceflight the way that so many of us envisioned it would be. And I think a lot of people just misunderstand the ways that human spaceflight can benefit life on Earth. I am a scientist by training, but I also had the benefit of my very first full-time job being International Space Station payloads. So when I worked for ISS National Lab, there were a lot of payloads that were completely automated, did not need to be touched, but there were also a lot of payloads that needed a human in the loop, needed an astronaut to do them. And there were some payloads, I, I was on the physical sciences side, but I did help out my life science his colleagues with some payloads that were actually about human health and development. In fact, that tends to be the number one priority when you're doing science in space is understanding human health, not just for the astronauts and long-term human spaceflight, but for the people on Earth. Drug development models, 3D printing of tissue, like all of these advances that could benefit life on Earth that have already benefited life on Earth. And people just are not aware of it or they discount it when they completely reject human spaceflight. Which brings me to the fact that Government trained astronauts and private astronauts are not that different. And when we look to see what's going on with commercial human spaceflight right now, almost all of the orbital astronauts who are paying their own way to go to space, doing science experiments on their own dime. I did a whole video on that too. So if you look to see Axiom Space astronauts, they are doing so many science experiments. The Inspiration4 crew did so many science experiments. The Polaris Dawn crew is anticipating to do so many science experiments. They don't have any need to do this. They could just be tourists, but they are doing science to contribute. And if you wanna watch that video, that's up here. Which brings me to my last topic, that these are not space tourists. The four individuals who are on the Polaris Dawn mission are highly trained professionals. I did a whole video on that, that these are professional private astronauts. And we shouldn't categorize everybody who pays their own way to space as a space tourist, because we're gonna see a lot more professionals flying in space. So if you wanna see that video, that's up here. Bringing it back to the fact that there are 19 people in space right now, that is a good start. That is not where we should end it. I wanna see that vision of thousands or millions of people living and working in space. And when I say in space, you know, it could be in orbit, it could be on the moon, it could be Mars, it could, like wherever. I just wanna see us, humanity, expanding out and breaking ground and doing things that we've never done before for the benefit of humanity. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how SpaceX, Jared Isaacman, and others, Fram2, for example, how they can speed things up and really advancing spaceflight to the way that it was envisioned decades ago.